Chris, everybody. The girls are cool. Question for the room at large here. I mean, but don't like, don't like actually answer. I mean, this is clearly some, some stuff I'm going to do no matter what you say. But have you ever, have you ever taken the time to really stop and like think about who your friends are and like how they look from an outsider's perspective? Like, I've been doing that. And, I mean, well, first of all, don't do it. Like, it's really just a terrible idea all around. Because now I realize my friends are like the gayest straight people you have ever met. <laughs> and I want to be clear, I don't mean gay as in like a word I'm using in place of the word awful. Like I'd say retarded if I meant that. But I, I mean like the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis are just incredibly homosexual. Like there's no other way to put it. Like my friend comes up to me and he just goes, hey, so um, you know how girls are allowed to just like touch each other's boobs and it is completely okay? Uh, well, go on. <laughs> well, see, I've been thinking, which right away should have been the first warning sign, by the way. So, I've been thinking, like, why can't God have something like that, you know? So, so, so that's why I invented the program. And before I had a chance to react, he reaches over and just, he just pops oh, a field. Oh. And he's like, no, no, it's okay, there's nothing gay about the program. Uh, let me stop it right there. Oh, there no. is everything gay about programs. Oh, like, like, if I got out of dictionary right now, check marks at the end of every sentence in there. Like, like, let's do this. Like, let's get some scraps of paper and all write down all the gay things about programs. And, and you write down what I'm sure are many straight things. And we'll put those on a scale and we can just see before our very eyes which one happens to come out like, like slightly heavier. Nothing gay about programs. No, no, I mean, of course not. Like, you, you think there's just something inherently homosexual about the, the purposeful touching of another man's penis and testicles? I mean, ludicrous, really. But, man, just friends suck, don't they? But, but do you remember how when you were growing up, like, your best friends were the ones who had all the coolest toys? Well, that is exactly as true today, because I have a friend who way doesn't, and I'm thinking of dropping him down to an acquaintance. Because, no, I am, because going to his house is like being on an episode of Antiques Roadshow. And, and, and like a really shitty episode, where it's not like everything is just this historical relic with great, well, like it's engaging and educational. No, it's just like everything there, it's just like a, a long line of useless crap that's just barely still being sold commercially. Like, like everything he owns has got like one week left till retirement, like it's getting too old for this shit, like that sort of thing. Like it's the last line of defense of consumerism at his house. But I'll be over there and be like, hey, so uh, you mind if I check my email or something? No, no, you go ahead. The, uh, the computer is right in there. All right, thanks. And, you know, I can't help but check out you know, the, the stickers on the side of the case that are both the latest and greatest technical specs. Like, oh, uh, oh, kilohertz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can remember those. So, uh, so is this thing going to stay powered on its own, or do I have to like turn up wooden crank every once in a while to keep it going? Or, or is there going to be like some big Dust Bowl era Oki who stands alongside me like shoveling coal into a furnace the whole time, like as his foot gets cut, the soot, soot covers his face, like, oh, so how's it coming over there? Well, uh, don't stop that shoveling there, Edwin. The JPEG is near complete. <laughs> camping with me, and, with me and some of my other buddies, and I don't know how much you know about camping, but it is customary to at some point, like, you know, take out your tents and set them up. Yeah, I, all right, so for your benefit, I'm just going to draw a line right here on the stage. And, and here on this line is this friend I've been telling you about. His name is, uh, oh, fuck it, it doesn't matter. I mean, these are all just lies anyway. <laughs> so he's over here, and over here on this side of the line is me and everybody else who lives in modern times with our luxuries such as penicillin and the polio vaccine. <laughs> so over here we've got these just like pristine new tents. We just bought them online the other day. I mean, they have clearly benefited from all of the 21st century's best tent innovations. Like, like I'm sure there was just like all the leaders of the industry got together in some kind of a think tank and just like banged away on the latest features for this model because it's amazing the era we live in, because all you have to do is like unzip the bag the tent came in, and then just like, boom, like a fully formed tent pops out ready to go. Like, it's incredible. But meanwhile, on this side of the spectrum, 
this guy pulls out a tent that I'm pretty sure I've seen in like old Civil War photographs, where like where it was like its retirement ceremony, and there's like a whole platoon of Union soldiers that were just like saluting it for years of reliable and valuable service. Like to this day, I am convinced he either robbed the Smithsonian or got a DeLorean up to 88 miles per hour to get his hands on that tent. Wow. So like. And by the way, watching him try to set that set that up was just a miserable time for everybody because he is not a Boy Scout by like any stretch of that word. And this tech came from a time where they didn't actually understand the meaning of the word instructions. Like like they thought they did because there was a piece of paper that came with it that had that word clearly written on top. But it was just like an artist's rendering of what the completed tent might look like next to a happy family on like their fishing trip. You know, one of those here's what you fail to achieve pictures. <laughs> so, I mean, to his credit, by the end of the night, he did indeed have something that was, you know, like a tent. I mean, it, it had, like, the basic components of a tent there, in that there was some manner of, you know, canvas or, or tarp that existed between his head and the sky. But, but I mean, like, it didn't look anything like the picture you have in your head when I say the word tent. Like, like you would lose in Pictionary if you ever drew a tent like this. And, and like, the whole rest of the night, your partner would just be, like, silently fuming at you, like, barely containing his rage, until eventually he just couldn't put a lid on it. It was just like, how was I supposed to get tent from that? No, no, like, this is not a tent. No, 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 this is a saber-toothed tiger made of oatmeal or something. No, no, no. Because I had never seen a tent with tusks before. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've got for you guys. So thank you so much for making my first time really awesome. Woo! Excellent. 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 Excellent.